two men journey to the bars and restaurants of Scandinavia to find amazing beers, always with the same question. Hey, what's on tap? It's time to find out. Welcome to What's on Tap Podcast. This is another episode. I don't know which one. Some random number over 500. Number. <laughs> um, and we're back once again, Stefan. Martin. And uh, we're going to review some beers. Yep. And we got a couple of uh, beers we picked up at System Belogget. We did. Um, one was a complete surprise because I thought it was a stout. And the other is a stout. <laughs> yeah, and that was the surprise for me because I bought it. And then I, when we communicated, I was like, "You surely you bought this. And Stefan goes, nope. But it's a beer. You, you'll uh, hear later why it's in his wheelhouse. Yeah, I, I mean, it's not like I can't get a can of it later. It said plenty on the no, shelves. No, but you mean you didn't? <laughs> I didn't get it when it came out. You didn't out get here. it, so I got I the didn't. chance to I bring didn't. it. I'm excited about that, too. I'm really glad you did. So, first up, we have something from DC Brow, and I think we've primarily gotten uh, okay ish lagers, mm. not great. <laughs> My memory of them is really cheap beers, like surprisingly cheap beers. Uh, on the system blog at shelves. Yeah. But this is our 10th anniversary edition. It is called On the Wings of Armageddon. And it is a 9.2%. They're calling it Imperial IPA. Uh, not a uh, double IPA. No, an Imperial. And definitely not a hazy IPA. Because this is like straight up. West Coast classic looking. It is very West Coast. Traditional English IPA, as I've seen one, and like you almost kind of forget that they even make this style beers, especially at nine point two percent. Exactly, and it smells like a old school double West Coast IPA, like Stone used to always yeah, make. Yeah, you got this kind of nice hoppy notes to it, a little bit of that bubble gummy kind of stuff, and this, the sweetness. And yeah, and this is back when really malty kind yeah. of kind of double IPA. And this is back when they used to make these, and I, and I would drink them and go, I really don't get why people like this style very much. It <laughs> just doesn't, I just don't like the flavors. Now I've come to appreciate it um, and almost kind of look forward to seeing something traditional pop up. Oh, we're going to cut you off if you've developed a drinking problem. I've spilled on myself. All right, let's take a, we're going to do a cleaning break here, so we're going to pause for one second. All right, we've cleaned Martin up now, so we're ready to start back to the other side. That was a pretty major spill. <laughs> I, brought, I brought the beer up to smell it, and then my arm had some kind of spasm, and the beer went mm. all over my torso. <laughs> There's a Swedish, uh, like, uh, poppy folk song, which translated becomes, Martin has lousy motor skills, <laughs> poor Martin, he struggles and struggles. And that's basically... That's you? That's what's yeah, happening that, today? That's, that's what's happening uh, uh, wow, <laughs> that was the biggest spill I've had in a while. That isn't the cause of a bottle, uh, like exploding, exploding yeah. uh, uh, carbonation-wise. Well, let's get back to the beer. I will hold it with two hands. Very clearly. All right, let's uh, cheers. Cheers. Mm. Oh, it smells. It tastes exactly like old school. Malty double IPA is used to taste. Yep, it's and it's got that bitter finish. Yeah, it's a little sweet on the front end. It's this one's hard for me to judge. I'll be honest. <laughs> it, it's it's the kind of beer that's amusing because if we were to age this, mm -hmm. it would turn into an American barley wine. Yeah, because the the two styles are surprisingly close to each other. It definitely has a sweet. It's not overly malty like these used to be. No, fair where enough. Where you get a lot of kind of this weird bubble gummy kind of flavor to them. This is lightly sweet. You definitely get some hops on it. And then the finish goes straight to that back when uh, IPAs used to be just how bitter can we make them. Yep. It reminds me a lot of that. Like, oh, we're going to make this super bitter at the end. Um, this isn't super bitter. It's just more bitter than what we've had for so long <laughs> that it kind of comes off as abrasive a little bit. But I think it's it's a I think it's a pretty good beer. Yeah, it it, it reminds <laughs> me of Stone Double Bastard. Mm -hmm. um, it's this why it's a hard one to to review because the style is so far out of 
like public consumption that to have yeah. one, you're kind of like, I don't really know how good this is to style because I haven't had one in like two years or you have one like once a year. And uh, so even getting like regular IPAs that are somewhat hazy or cloudy is kind of rare these days. Yep. So this is, this it's is really re nice. really out of style. Um, or maybe it's perfectly in style, it's just everything else is, the style has changed to something else now. This is one of those styles where I'm, I'm kind of, I'm biased positively. Mm -hmm. I used to, I mean, this was what we had. This was the only hops we got. Yeah, I, I used to hate this style uh, um, for the longest time. I did not understand why people liked double IPAs because they were just weird. They didn't taste like an IPA. They tasted like something crazy. Yeah. Um, and then having tried this again, I'm kind of like, oh, yeah, I kind of missed this. I wish we had more of these around. I mean, it's a minimum 375. I'm, I'm almost inclined to give it a four. I'm going to give it a... It's not a four, but it's really close. See, I think it is a four. I think it's it's very true to style. I think the carbonation is spot on. When you agitate it, it gets, it gets a nice little head. There's some good lacing on the glass. But this show isn't known for its uh, rating according to style adherence. No, no, no. We, we neither, play neither one of us would pretty fast and loose with style guidance. Neither one of us would, would pass the test. I can guarantee you that. No, exactly. There's no Cicerone judging in our future. <laughs> ah, we, 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 we could pass the Cicerone uh, beer sommelier test if we wanted to. Right. <laughs> that requires work. That seems like far beyond our, our abilities at this no, point. I mean, it's an ideological choice. Yes, yeah. It's a, Taking a philosophical stand against it. Exactly. Um, yeah, so what would you give this? Oh, yeah, you said 375. Yeah, it, it's a really strong 375. It's almost a no. three. I'm going to just go ahead and give it a four because yeah. I, I really like it, and there's a big nostalgia factor here that's keeping, there, me, there keeping me excited about it. Okay, so next up we have... An, a Russian Imperial Stout. Privyat. Is the name of the beer. From Destel. And the reason you said... Oh, this is 11% ABV. Yep. The reason you said that this would be a uh, right up my alley is because we've had the uh, Dos Vidania on the show at least once. In 2018, you right. brought Dos Vidania Rye Barrel. And we've had Dos Vidania at least once or twice since then as well. Yeah, just you and me sharing. Yeah. And this... Uh, so, Pivyat which is Russian for hay or high, is the base beer for our bourbon barrel aged Dosvidania. Even though this beer isn't aged in oak barrels, it greets you with a color as dark as night, a thick tan head, and predominant characters of dark chocolate and roasted malts with an abundant fruity esters. Right. So Stefan is the guy who introduced me to Destil. Mm-hmm. Uh, before they started to send their sours here to Sweden. Mm -hmm. Now they're everywhere but particularly their sours. It's mostly so, their sours. Yeah. So he is, for me, uh, Destil Imperial Stouts is connected to Stefan. And then we've had more of them, and yeah. that just solidified it. So when and they've, always been, they've always been really good. I've enjoyed all of the, the Dos Vidania series that I've had. Exactly. Uh, and this smells amazing. So it's previous. Pop quiz. What's the Russian word for truth? There's a newspaper called uh, Pravda. Oh, good. You get, you get <laughs> many points. You know, I, I took Russian for six months in college. Wow, you did? Yeah, I can only say like three phrases. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if I, if I talk to my Russian friend, she says I don't know any Russian still. So <laughs> we had a we had a 10 minute back and forth with me just to pronounce Drazvizhya uh, pro properly. What, and I, what for, does it mean? Uh, it's like hello. And um, so I probably just butchered that. And so anyone who speaks Russian is probably like, that dumb son of a bitch doesn't know what he's doing still. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, to this, it's, it is a rich, roasty, chocolatey stout. Yeah, it doesn't smell very roasted. It smells very sweet and milk chocolatey. Mm -hmm. um, is, is there any... It almost smells like uh, liquor pralines. Yeah, I don't see anywhere on here that says that it's... There's any additives or anything. It just says no. uh, uh, corn, uh, wheat malt. Corn malt and wheat malt. That's all it says on the can. I feel like 
Great Brands Brewing redid the label so that it could be for the Swedish market. So, cheers. Uh, cheers. No, it, it doesn't have any additives. Mm. That is just a straight up tasty Russian Imperial Stout. Mm -hmm. You do get some sweetness in there. Definitely some dark chocolate notes. Um, beautiful carbonation on it. I mean, this is just a solid base stuff all the way around. Yeah, the the flavors really uh, the flavors linger. Mm -hmm. nice. It's a real, real solid drink. Best before June of this year. A I stout. I mean, it's just, sure. I, I agree. You shouldn't age stouts. Uh, I would say this is one of those rare examples of a stout you could age. Because Probably. there's no additives or adjuncts that would that are going to change or disappear in the beer, it's just a solid, straight up imperial stout. So I mean, it should in a couple of years it'll taste dusty, like dusty old stout. Could be, too, yeah, yeah, it could. Could turn a little more bitter. Could turn a little softer. Who knows? Um, but this is definitely a beer that you could you could sell her in a way that wouldn't, uh, yeah, make the beer any worse in, in three to five years. If we were trying this next to really adjunct heavy or barrel aged beers, I think mm -hmm. it would get completely lost in the crowd. Well, yeah, because it doesn't have any of those sugary, right. flowery notes that, that really pump up those pastry stouts. I really think we are doing this beer a favor by drinking it exactly as intended, mm -hmm. not next to crazier stouts. Yeah. It is quite low key and uh, soft and mellow and fla friendly, flavorful flavors. Yeah, it's a very, very easy beer to drink. Yeah, and we're also trying it next to uh, the DC Broy mm -hmm. uh, Double IPA, which makes the the sweet Imperial Stout flavors stand out more. Mm -hmm. I think the, this beer cannot get any better. I mean, this is the optimal. Way to drink it. The DC Broy, if we drank that in the sun, it would go up in, in rating. You think so? I think so. I don't know. I think... <laughs> I don't think that would really make a difference. <laughs> this isn't like a warm sun, like the... Yeah, the Imperial IPA is not one that you're like, oh, on a hot summer day, what I really want is a I enjoy 9%. <laughs> I enjoy double IPAs when it's warm outside. Oh, I do too, but I don't think this one in particular. Ah, uh, maybe not. The hazy, maybe the not. hazy IPAs, I think, would go really well. That that is side. that is definitely. I true. think this feels. I think the first, you know, the Imperial IPA feels more like a uh, a winter beer, it, and you know, because it is so full and heavy and bitter and sweet, and then the the Imperial for so the Russian stout is also just warm and yeah. friendly and relaxing. Now the aroma of the Privyat is even more, like, when I say liqueur-filled praline, mm -hmm. is praline, we've had this discussion before, is praline a proper English word? Or is that just me taking a Swedish word from pra French? The praline is a type of candy normally referred to. It's chocolate. Uh, yes. But That's kind of what the, I mean. Like, a praline isn't a chocolate in and of itself. It's a chocolate mixed with stuff. Uh -huh. So in the States where I grew up, praline is usually a um, chocolate mixed with like cashews, and, oh, not cashews, but uh, pecans. Really? Now I remember and, us uh, having this discussion. Caramel, I think. But that's not but, what I but mean. But in other places, I think a praline is like a, more of a toffee, chocolate toffee okay. combination. But here, it would be like if you have a, a, a chocolate... A hollow chocolate ball, and you fill that with nougat, mm -hmm. that would be a praline. If you filled it with another type of chocolate, it would be a praline. If you filled it with some kind of liquor filling, that would be a praline. Everything so, is... So, so, like the box of chocolates, the uh, Aladdin chocolates that you get, I those think, are all pralines. I think they call them... I think they do too. Pralines. I think they pralines, do as well. Pralines. I think they do call so, them... Yeah, so there could be a lot of different things. I think it really depends on where you are in the world, but, what so, a praline is. What, but would, I think, what would you call a hollow chocolate 
uh, ball with some kind of filling that could be another chocolate or nougat or uh, that's um, just chocolate. I am not prepared to answer that question at this time. Ah. <laughs> I don't remember. You would need to kill me. Okay, fair I mean, enough. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's like I'm sure praline is the probably the word that they use in America too. Mm. It's just not the context that I'm used to hearing it in, so I always associate it with this I get it. Uh, other type of candy. Otherwise, it's like a, a box of chocolates or uh, filled chocolates, but praline was probably the yeah. correct, maybe French term that it should be referring to. So, okay, so this beer, the aroma now reminds me of liquor filled chocolate outer casing mm -hmm. uh, treats. Because it's not pure chocolate. No. It's chocolate mixed with... When I say boozy now, it's not in the bad sense. It slightly like heat mm -hmm. booziness. Mm -hmm. A waft of... Oh, that's interesting. And that's what you get from these chocolates, especially after you've bitten into them. Mm -hmm. That's what fills your your mouth and reaches your nose, nose as well. Yeah. I think it's a really... I think it's really, really good. So I'm going to give this a four as well. Yeah, strong four. Okay. It's really good. Well, let's wrap it up on that. Uh, we're going to go figure out what pralines are now. And uh, you can find us online at what's on tap podcast.com, Instagram, Spotify, Facebook, and wherever you find podcasts in the world, you'll find what's on tap. So until next time, keep drinking, you dumbbells. Dumb.